Hello everybody, it's Michelle Patterson here with Angel Souls and this is our weekly angelic message for the week beginning March 30th, 2020. Quickly before we begin, if you would like to get a personal reading with me, just go to my website at angelsouls444.com. All the details are down below. I have courses at Gumroad. And of course, thank you to all my Patreon supporters. Everything that you might want to know about that in the description box. Okay, so we are kind of doing a thing where we are recapping what we've learned. <laughs> We're gonna get into it here. I'm not really sure where they're going with this, but I just, I'm praying that my shirt doesn't become problematic. It just keeps shifting on me. <laughs> what is? Um, anyway, <laughs> so let's get into it as we get ready to come into April. What I'm feeling here is a need for rest. Yes, they're definitely saying a need for rest to calm down, to call, calm our nervous system. And we even had that message a couple of weeks ago, and I don't think that that came into my awareness when we were talking about the week before that, that video. Okay, so that would have been like the March 9th video. Go back and check it out. I think the um, color card, if I remember correctly, was revitalize your nervous system, okay? So that is, have we allowed ourselves to get completely fried from hysteria? Yes. Um, are our fears amping up? Where are we right now? What are we doing? If you are like, look at the state of the world, oh my gosh, okay, well that is telling you something, right? It's telling you we need to turn this around, okay? Now in our individual lives, if things are not coming to pass in the way that we want, I think for a lot of us, we're opening up that heart space and we're realizing it's coming about in the way that it needs to. Mm -hmm. Expect a lot of sort of, yeah, okay, a lot of surprising twists and turns is how I wanna put that. So a lot of things that we didn't expect to see coming, here it is. Uh, do not take things at face value. So this could be something coming into your world that it seems like it wouldn't be an opportunity and yet it's a great opportunity. Or something that is seemingly, oh my gosh, this is awful. How are we ever gonna get through this? We're starting to turn it around and go, okay, wait, this is bringing us closer. It's helping us open up. Uh, it's helping us to even slow down. And I wanna bring this up too. Uh, I know it's not like revolutionary to think that <laughs> if you work yourself too hard or you let the anger get to you too much, you start to have you know, heart issues. You could start having issues in the brain. Um, you can start getting sick. You could get diabetes. I, diabetes keeps coming up. And I know, um, like that's kind of been a thing that's run in my family too, but you know, you can turn that around. You don't need to accept that as sort of your fate, but we'll start to see as diseases start to manifest themselves, um, or people, uh, you know, people having, I, I want to keep, I'm gonna to try to keep as many negative words out of this as possible, but people who end up in a situation that they didn't wanna be in because they were rushing or because they put their, you know, their schedule and what they feel like they have to do above everything else, okay? <sighs> Communication keeps coming up. This is a big thing. So not being honest with ourselves, not being honest with one another. There might even be communication I wanna say there could even be like communication issues around the workplace, around where you live, <laughs> right? So it's not, it doesn't like, it actually benefits you. Let's put it this way. So there's like something that was lost in translation that maybe you've been getting stressed over and then you go back and look at it and you're like, oh, well, actually I really held on to what I thought it should have been. This actually works out a lot better, <laughs> right? So just it, it, as much as you can, try to stay calm, go with the flow, uh, accept things as they come. And there's a message here too, one step at a time. So apply this to our lives in general, but you know, our personal lives, but also with the world. There's a lot of thinking ahead. There's a lot of, oh gosh, what, what if, right? Kind of thinking. And all that does is start scrambling the energy of the present so that you're not fully creating what you might want for yourself. Does that make sense? What else here? Hmm. This whole thing, this is going to make us so aware. 
Yeah, this is gonna make us so aware of what we need to be exposing ourselves to, what we don't wanna expose ourselves to, how our bodies have adjusted, taking more you time, taking more time with your family. And this doesn't have to be like the feeling of crisis. It's, it's just more, say it with me now, awareness, right? <laughs> that awareness of, um, you know, we can't just keep going full throttle and expect to not have obstacles stun us every once in a while, right? So we have to reevaluate. And I think that's what a lot of us are doing this week. We're reevaluating, resting, taking some time to not overthink it. This isn't an invitation to get back up in the ego consciousness and start analyzing everything, but rather connection, 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 connection. I'll tell you guys, uh, when I'm going through some of the hard stuff and I'll admit sometimes I don't feel like sitting down and, you know, cause when you're all like riled up, it's like, no, I just got to figure this out. I, you know, whatever. But when the answer isn't coming and I feel my body getting into that, like, like sort of hyper adrenaline state, I go, okay, and this needs to stop right now. So <laughs> I will go into meditation. I will go for a hike. I will get out in the sunshine and I will let it go. I will let it go. I'm not sitting there trying to manifest anything. I'm not trying to do anything about it. I'm just resting on the topic, <laughs> right? And I, I get centered. I just enjoy whatever moment I'm in. And when I do that, number one, I sleep better. But also I find that all of a sudden something very unexpected shows up. And it's usually a really great solution. It's another path to take. It's another thing to consider. Expect the unexpected. That's the deal here. <laughs> and it's not just this week. It just feels like there's a message here of the world is turning around and things are not going to be what they seem. Now, if you're one of those people who gets very stuck in your ways, if you think it can only be this way and no other way, you're going to be in trouble. I cannot tell you enough. Or if you are being very shallow about your life, Michelle, you're so judgmental, say what you will. If you're being very shallow about your life, how cute am I? How much money am I making? You know, how many followers do I have? You know, all that kind of stuff. As I explained, I think about a month ago now on YouTube, having your subscribers actually is part of your livelihood, but you know, and it's probably the same for Instagram. But what I'm talking about are these people who just live like this and you're being, you're putting your image above consideration for others. Does that make sense? Um, hmm, I'm get, I'm feeling the example of somebody who's more into staging selfies for themselves so that they have some kind of content to put on their social media as opposed to spending time with maybe an elderly relative, all right? That, that just, I don't know where that came from. It was an example that popped up in my head, so there it is. So we need to get our priorities straight, give ourselves a rest, be centered in here, okay? The heart, the heart is gonna give you all the answers and being in touch with your spiritual team. If you notice the past several readings that I've done, I haven't said the angels said, now I'm still doing what I do, but it's interesting how they've kind of, not to say I won't say it down the road, but it's been interesting the past several readings, they, they've wanted me to kind of back off from saying that because of how people are responding to it. Number one, you'll have people out there who don't believe in angels, who still come here, interesting, right? They still come here, some are trolling, but some are interested in what's being said. But the second you put a label on anything, they might, maybe not even mentally, but in their body, they just, whatever trauma response happens, they start to shut down. Um, and in other cases, when we say angels, uh, they were saying, you know, like there's too much angel worship going on and people are trying too hard to just, you know, grab onto the angels instead of living for yourself. And, you know, they're here to guide. They're not here to live for you. It still stuns me how people will come and, and they'll get a personal reading with me and they'll say, what do the angels want me to do about this, that, and the other? That's kind of like, you know, they're not your boss, right? They're, that's not how this goes. We're all equal parts of a team, of a moment, of an expression of the divine. We all have our roles, okay? They're not here to be the human beings. If they were here to be the human beings, they'd be in the human skin. They're here to be the guides. So the way we present 
these messages, it's always contingent upon what space you're in and how you're willing to take it, <laughs> right? So that's what we're doing right now, in case you were wondering. So I think that's clear enough. Let's get on to the cards here. I still don't have my little table back over here. Whatever. <laughs> okay, let me awkwardly shuffle like this so I don't bump my microphone. <sighs> okay. Lots of things are coming together. It's kind of like... Um, you've been working so hard and, you know, trying to get everything kind of organized. Now you get a chance to rest. Just make sure that you are double checking. And we did just come out of a retrograde earlier in the month. So you might be going back and catching things, but it feels nice. There's like nice resolution and everything kind of working out in a better way than you ever thought it would, right? So that's cool. Mm hmm. All right. So we have Master Teacher Card Soul Connection Crystal Lovers. So this, you know, the first thing that always pops out here is the connection part. So this is for everybody, right? Love, connection. It doesn't have to be romantic love. Well, okay. Let's let's take this in two parts. So cover up that word lovers for a second and just focus on the beautiful connection that you can have with others. This is something that we're learning to rediscover. Okay. Now, as far as lovers go, <laughs> could this be singles meeting love? Absolutely. But don't get desperate about it. Do not get desperate. And do not think that you are an expert in relationships just because you are in one. <laughs> All right? I had somebody leave a really goofy comment like a couple of weeks ago. And I was just like, okay, that, that is, that's extreme. But, um, you know, let your love connections have a soul connection as well. And don't just make up a soul connection in your mind because you want one. Okay. If you are in touch with your heart, you'll know, you'll know. Yes. So this is a nice week for people who do have a love partner. It's a good week for singles. It's good for everybody because everybody's getting a chance at love if you want to accept it. Okay. All right. <laughs> so stiff night conflict. This this immediately felt like worldwide conflict. So there could be a lot of things still happening in the world, uh, things that people, things that are getting put out there to put us in fear. Now this could be you feeling pulled in too many dir different directions. This could feel like conflict within your heart space. Whatever it is, you don't have to give into it. Focus on the love. That's the most important part. That's the most fun part too, <laughs> right? We want that. All right, then we have living in gold tecti manifestation. So when you're in a conflicted heart space and you're not focusing on manifesting with love, uh, you're not focused on actual soul connection and opening yourself up for that. People want a quick route to soul connection and they always want a quick route to manifestation. And then when their lives fall apart, they can't believe it. They just can't believe their lives just didn't go the way that they thought it would. You shocked? Because I'm not. If you're coming from a space of love, there will naturally be patience <laughs> in there as well. And that's usually how you know you're not manifesting from a loving place is when you're starting to feel like, I want my way now. I don't want to, rah, and it should look like, rah, and that, 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 that. When you feel grumpy, go back. Okay. <laughs> go back, collect yourself, get centered, and, and see what you can bring into this world. This is also telling us to be mindful that we are manifesting the conflict in the world. What, what, what? That's not my fault. It's the government's fault. It's everybody else's fault. It's everybody else, everybody else, everybody else. You're, you are them and they are you. We're all to blame. <laughs> right? It's not about blaming really, but we have to be careful what we're putting out there. If you expect bad things in this world, if you're looking at this world and going, oh, you know, blah, 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 blah. That's what we're going to keep pulling in. Okay. The more conflicted we are in ourselves, the more conflict we're going to see out in the world. What do you want? You need to choose it, okay? Then we have clear quartz purification. We need to get rid of the gunk. We are getting too clogged up basically and our creative centers are getting, I don't wanna say damaged, but you know, getting knocked around a little bit and now you're not in the space to be open for love. So we can bring love into the world. That's what I want to say. Let's all be very, very loving towards different aspects of ourselves, which would be the other individuals in this world and purify, okay? Get cleansed of all the energy 
Don't see other people as the enemy. They are you. You are them. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's get a color card going. There's cards going this way, that way. Okay, here we go. This is black. Find richness from the dark of night. The number is 28. Now, I do record these because I have to edit and get them loaded. It takes a minute, right? It'll take some time to do that. I do record these a little bit ahead of time, so I don't even know how this is going to play out. But getting back to one, this reduces to one. So you have to come back into yourself. Now, whenever you see conflict going on outside of you, um, if things are feeling very dark, what's the answer? Love. Recognizing the conflict. Recognizing that when things are expressing in a way that we don't love, come back to you, come back to one. That doesn't mean I got to look out for number one. It's not that exactly. It's, it's more about, let me reevaluate. What fears am I putting out there in my energy? What am I expecting? What sort of thing, you know, am I in complete terror? Am I in complete um, fright? Okay. I remember years ago, this card came out. And again, I, I record these ahead of time just for practicality's sake. If you want content, I got to make sure I get on top of it. And this was back when the Paris happened. I am not saying that that is going to happen again. I hope that it does not. Um, but... I remember somebody posted on Facebook a picture of this card and right next to it was a picture of the Eiffel Tower. And it was this, it was this image, but with the Eiffel Tower silhouetted instead. And I know it gave me chills. So every time this card comes out, um, I, I don't think it's something so that you'd be scared. It's not about that. It's about an awareness. Let's be careful. We gotta be careful of what seeds we allow to be planted in our minds. You know, I, I'm not going to get controversial here because I, you know, I already feel like I do a little bit of that. <laughs> I've gone through dark night of the soul moments many times, many times. And I've had to find my way through the darkness and find that light again and say, no, this is me. I'm coming home. Let this fill up my being. When there are people out there, souls that get scared, they will deny their soul. They will diminish their light. They will diminish the expression of light in their human skin. Yes, their human form. When that happens, there's too much of a vacancy. And now the darkness can come in. It's fumes of fear that start to animate the body. And that's where you do have the people who are completely checked out. And they don't know what's going on, but they just need to see a flash of some excitement maybe. That, and, and that's the, I don't like what's happening right now. They're giving me insight into what some of these people, how they're functioning. How they're functioning in that moment. Um, they do see it as exciting. Like the same kind of thing when someone watches a video game and they're winning and they don't understand the consequences. S something is seriously wrong, we know that, but it's like they're not home. There's nobody home. That soul is not animating the body. The fumes of fear are. And that fear starts to manifest like a dark smoke and starts to hit up on this brain, this mind, which is very powerful. But it can be programmed to do good or bad. And so the energy starts shooting over to bad and now they're out there doing all kinds of things. So what do we need to do? Why do you need to know this? Don't just sit there and go, oh, my poor me, poor me, my life should be better. I mean, I'm in a beautiful home and I have a loving husband or wife. I have beautiful, healthy kids. I have plenty of money in the bank, but I just don't feel fulfilled. I just don't, I, I'm finding everything wrong with my life instead of having gratitude. You're wasting energy and you're wasting time. We have lots of time. Time is not linear. There's lots of time. But sometimes when there's a manifestation involved here, we have to refocus. Okay? So instead of just focusing on what you deem is wrong with your life, bring that energy into your heart. 
and put it out there to every child, to every person in fear, to every person out there and say, I approach life with love. We can have a peaceful world. We can have no sickness. We can have, God forbid, God forbid if it's terrorism, okay? We can change this. We don't need to feed people light necessarily. I heard a practitioner say this one time and I was so concerned that she put that out there. I was like, don't tell people to do that because empaths are already, we already tend towards codependency anyway. And then we get depleted and then we get sick and then we can't put our light out there. And now everyone's in trouble, (laughs) all right? Um, Because we're the ones that help people remember their light. And that's what you need to do as an empath, as a loving human being in this world. You're not here to feed people light. You're here to help them remember their own. Now, you may not be able to do that in the physical because people are running on their intellect, right? And so they won't take it in. They'll try to dismiss it. They'll try to diminish it. But you can do it in meditation. You can do it from the heart space. We have teams of spiritual beings around us that all we have to do is set that intention and feel the love. And they'll deliver. They'll help us with that. They'll help guide, right? They're guides. So they'll help guide that information to anybody who will accept it. And it might take a few people sending love to someone who's denied their soul. But if we all do it, number one, you're going to feel other people doing it. And that's the connection. That's that beautiful love connection right there. But if someone who has denied their soul, you know, if there's some light left there, we can sort of ping the light so that they might follow it. They have to be the ones to go find it, but we can help them remember that it's there and that it's not too late, okay? As doggy in the background confirms the message, all right? So there's that. Um, Anything else I should say on this, guys? I think that'll do. I was just looking at the cards again, but I think we'll just leave it there, guys. You know, do what you can this week. Keep your priorities straight. And as always, I am sending you so much love and take care. Bye-bye.